A very important Missouri Tiger is deciding to skip the Armed Forces Bowl. Plus, as a Missouri Tiger basketball fan, why can you be optimistic about the future by looking at Kansas's roster? Well, I'll tell you why. All of this and more coming up right now on Locked on Mizzou. <laughs> Locked on Mizzou, your daily podcast on the Missouri Tigers, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hail you true sons and daughters. I'm John Miller, your Mizzou mafioso and the central scrutinizer of Missouri Tigers football and basketball. And thanks for making this your first listen. And by the way, this episode is brought to you by On Location, the official hospitality partner of the NFL. And it's the only place to score a once in a lifetime Super Bowl ticket and experience package. Visit onlocationexp.com slash SB56 for more information or search Super Bowl on location. And, of course, the Tigers resume their historic rivalry with Kansas tomorrow in Allen Fieldhouse in Lawrence. But before we get to that particular basketball game and just some topics surrounding it, I do have to tell you that a Caleb Evans, Missouri has confirmed that he is entering the NFL draft and also skipping the Armed Forces Bowl. And quite honestly, if you're a Caleb Evans, this is probably a smart move and also just shines a light on how much Tyler Beatty must love playing college football, must love his teammates, and must love the University of Missouri, the fact that he's willing to go into this game. But obviously a little bit different of a situation for a Caleb Evans. He spent less than one year on campus at Missouri. Basically, he came here to play at a higher level and help improve his NFL stock, and I would say mission accomplished. He did a really nice job for Missouri, so he got what he wanted. I'd say the Tigers got what they wanted, which was a really solid player in the secondary. I'd say he was Missouri's best outside corner this past season pretty easily. So good for a Caleb Evans. I wish him all the luck in the world. Certainly no hard feelings not playing against Army. You know, the other day when I was really thinking about just the psychology of of this rivalry. I think the fans, for the most part, myself included, certainly anybody who is older than me, regardless if you're on the Kansas side or the Missouri side, I think the passions and the hatred, I think that's all going to come back instantly. But I was thinking, though, what if you're somebody like Amari Davis or Ronnie DeGray, guys who have been on campus for about four and a half seconds, right? Do they care about the Missouri Kansas rivalry? Well, no. Frankly, there's absolutely no chance that these guys care whatsoever. Ronnie DeGray played for UMass prior to this. Do you think he even was aware that Missouri and Kansas were arch rivals before he set foot on campus? I have to doubt it. I really do. Let's just be real. But hopefully, see, this is why why I think it's actually a big advantage for Kansas to be playing this game in Lawrence first. Because their players are much the same. It's not as though they're any different because, well, they have more upper upper class than than Missouri does. I'll say this. So maybe they've been indoctrinated into the sort of Kansas culture more than the underclassmen at Missouri would. That part I understand. But the deal really is it's the fans who are going to carry this energy forward. And if this would have started in Kansas City, like it was originally going to before COVID-19 reared its ugly head last season. Well, sure enough, now it's starting off in Lawrence, where you would think the Lawrence players, the the Jayhawk players, would get a real rise out of, again, its fans are going to be ready for this game. Because I promise you, again, if you're Amari Davis, if you're Ronnie DeGray, if if you're Boogie Coleman, I guess, certainly if you're any of the freshmen at Allen Fieldhouse tomorrow, this is going to be an atmosphere unlike any of anything these guys have ever seen before 
And I hope they're mentally prepared for that at the very least. And by prepared for it, I mean, literally, they're ready for that reality. And also, I hope they're excited for it, too. I hope it gives them some energy as well. Because right now, there is nobody in America who's giving Missouri a chance in this basketball game. Right now, it's still a little bit too early over at betonline.ag for an actual line to be posted. But if you look at kenpom.com, where the projections generally are pretty close to what the line ends up being, well, they're they're predicting a 82-62 Kansas victory, so about a 20-point loss. So not a lot of reasons for optimism right now. But you know what? If you're a Missouri player, take that as a reason for take that as a reason to get up. Take that as a reason for motivation is the word I was just searching for. Why would you just accept that you're going to lose by 20 points? And here's the other deal. While this Kansas team on paper, a really good basketball team, you know what? They're not exactly teaming with NBA talent or something like that. So if you're Missouri, there's no reason to be intimidated. Just go in there, play hard, and play the best basketball you possibly can. And I think the previous game, if it showed us anything, force the ball into the lane and hope for luck. Unfortunately, the Lawrence officiating at Allen Fieldhouse probably not going to do Missouri any favors, but you know what? We got to hope for luck. Just play hard and give this. This is a a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity, quite possibly, if you're somebody like Amari Davis. So you know what? Take it and run with it. By the way, with all of the FBI and NCAA infraction speculation that's been hanging around the Jayhawks program for the last few years, well, there's no doubt that their recruiting has taken a pretty significant hit if you look at this roster. And yet here they are, the fourth best team in the country, according to Ken Palm's projections and statistics so far, a top five team in the AP. So how are they doing it? And why does this actually give me a little bit reason for optimism as a Missouri fan? Well, I want to explain all of that moving forward. But first, I do want to tell you about On Location. Let's talk for a minute about kicking things up a notch for the big game, the grand stage, the Super Bowl. Super Bowl 56 at SoFi Stadium is less than 100 days away and on location, the official hospitality partner of the NFL is the only place to score a once in a lifetime Super Bowl ticket and experience package to the big game. Select your exact seats and choose from elite experiences featuring an exclusive pregame celebration with college stars, turn NFL legends like Troy Aikman, Marcus Allen, Tim Brown, Akbar Baja Biamilia, and more. Plus accommodations at five-star hotels and food by great the great Wolfgang Puck. Visit on location exp.com slash FB56 for more information or search Super Bowl on location. That's on location exp dot com slash sb56 or search super bowl on location all right this is it the putt to win the tournament if you sink it the championship is yours but on your back swing your hat falls over your eyes is this how you're running your business poor visibility because you're still relying on spreadsheets and outdated finance software To see the full picture, you need to upgrade by NetSuite by Oracle. And 27,000 businesses have already done so. So why don't you join them? And why would they do such a thing? Well, it's quite simple because NetSuite is number one when it comes to cloud financial systems powering your growth. Whether you need help with your financials, your inventory, planning, budgeting, Human Resources NetSuite has you covered. 93% of surveyed businesses increased their visibility and control after upgrading to NetSuite. So head to netsuite.com slash locked on NCAA for special end of year financing on the number one financial system for growing businesses. Once again, that's netsuite.com slash locked on 
NCAA. By the way, one of the elite scoring forwards in the entire country, I'd say a top 10, 15 ranked type player nationally, Mark Mitchell is deciding his college decision at three o'clock. He's down to UCLA, Duke, and Missouri after eliminating Kansas a few weeks back. Sure seems more than likely he's going to either UCLA or Duke. It seems like UCLA is the leader in the clubhouse right now. Mizzou with not a great shot, according to all the recruiting scuttlebutt out there. But you know what? We'll just have to see. And frankly, if Mark Mitchell decides to go elsewhere, that'll be about the last you hear from him on this program. But if he makes a shocking announcement that he's going to be a Tiger, well, we'll certainly have plenty of that. Plenty on Mark Mitchell going forward. That would be a huge coup for Missouri. But you know what? Interestingly, Mark Mitchell, the type of guy... Like I said before, eliminated Kansas from contention, did Mark Mitchell. But Mitchell, the type of guy that Kansas had been getting for years prior, but not so much. Again, with all the controversy that's been surrounding that program the last few seasons, well, Kansas, their recruiting has taken quite a dip. Now, let's put it in context here. For instance, the two freshmen that play the most on this Kansas roster this year. Zach Clemens, a 6'10 forward, was ranked 49th nationally in the country coming into this season. So basically akin to what Jeremiah Tillman was ranked coming into college. And then you've also got K.J. Adams, ranked 93rd in his class, basically akin to what Anton Brookshire, a current Missouri freshman, is ranked. Also, by the way, speaking of 93rd overall, well, Christian Braun, brother of Parker Braun, he's now a junior. Well, he was ranked 93rd coming out of high school as well. And also, Oche Ogbajajajujuje, or however the heck you pronounce that kid's name, the senior guard for Kansas, probably their leading scorer right now, their leading playmaker, 145th coming out of high school. Not a lot to brag about there. These are guys that Missouri could recruit. And guys, Missouri has recruited. You're talking about the 75 to like 150 range. Well, the Tigers can actually live there. There's a place where we can recruit. Now, where Kansas had been recruiting more, more, more often the previous few years was sort of in that one and done range where, where Duke and Kentucky have been making a lot of hay the last few years. Think about guys like Joel Embiid and Andrew Wiggins and and Josh Jackson to a lesser extent. By the way, I've, I've never been more right than I was about Josh Jackson being a bust. I never got it with that kid. His inability to, to do any kind of shooting or playmaking, I'm just not interested in the top 10. But But I digress. The point is, I think what we're learning here with enough time to actually analyze a roster and roster building and college basketball in general is sure. While one and done players are are great. I would always take anybody with that kind of talent. It sure seems like the Carmelo Anthony scenario where he comes to Syracuse for one season and takes them on a magical run to the national championship. Well, that sure seems like the exception more than the rule. And, And more often it seems like it's guys like, Anthony Edwards, who was the number one overall pick a couple years ago. Well, he played one very unmemorable season at Georgia. Same with Ben Simmons at LSU a few years ago. It seems like that scenario is a lot more likely than your team going all the way, for instance. Especially when you consider that guys like Zion Williamson and Kevin Durant, while certainly Duke and Texas don't regret taking those guys whatsoever, it's hard to argue that they didn't come up a little bit short in the NCAA tournament. All I'm trying to say here is not to rag on the young guys, the the one and done freshmen or whatever. I'm just saying a collection of talent in basketball is still better than an individual star, especially at the college level, because generally speaking, that star, if it's Zion Williamson, if it's Kevin Durant in the absolute best case scenario, Well, even so, that guy is still 18 years old, and he's only played high school basketball before this. So expecting that young man to then carry a team deep into March, it's really asking a lot. Even Michael Jordan, as a true freshman, was not up to that task. He had James Worthy and Sam Perkins on his team. And yes, he hit 
what ultimately was the game winning shot in the national title, Jordan was not the leader on that ball club. He was not expected to carry his team. Yes, there were actually star players that stayed until they were juniors and seniors back in the day. That's the big difference. So again, if you're Missouri, you can recruit guys who are ranked nationally from, say, 75 to 150, like Kansas has with this particular team. That's not a crazy thought whatsoever. It's a crazy thought to think Missouri can out-recruit Kentucky or Kansas when it's at its absolute upper echelon, or Duke for that matter. For instance, we're probably not going to get Mark Mitchell today. But that's not the end of the world. That's the lesson for Missouri fans. If you have good coaching, if you have good talent recognition, and frankly, what Bill Self has done well, other than cheat, is find guys that have skill sets that fit into what he likes to do. And he's he's certainly shown it with this team. You got to give him some credit there. Now, when it comes to my personal philosophy, if I were a Missouri basketball coach, well, I would recruit shot makers and playmakers and teach them how to play defense, teach them how to block out, teach them all that stuff later. Because guess what? This philosophy that Conzo Martin seems to have where he seems to gravitate toward guys who are pretty good defensively in high school, that type of thing, it doesn't seem to be working out. We need more skill and less brawn. Not Christian Braun and Parker Braun, but you know what I'm saying. Now, I know Desiree Reed Francois, the Missouri Athletic Director, has been obviously thinking a lot about the fan experience at her short time at the university so far. And you know what? In the spirit of our great state, I would like to offer a great compromise moving forward. But first, I want to tell you all about another one of our great sponsors, and that's Made In. How does your favorite restaurant consistently make such excellent food? Well, the short answer is they have access to the right kitchen tools. And with Made In's professional quality cookware and kitchenware, anyone is capable of making restaurant quality food at home. If craftsmanship and quality are important to you, well, you should check out Made In. Made In is a cookware and kitchenware brand that works with renowned chefs and artisans to produce some of the world's best pots, pans, and yes, even wine glasses. That's what I'm most excited about. And right now, Made In is offering our listeners 15% off your first order with promo code Locked On. This is the best discount available anywhere online for Made In products. Go to madeincookware.com slash locked on and use the promo code locked on for 15% off your first order. Once again, madeincookware.com slash locked on and use the promo code locked on. And by betonline.ag, where quite honestly, I used to make a decent bit of extra money on the side betting Major League Baseball a few years ago. But that was before everybody else started figuring out my edges, right? I used batting average on balls and play and all different kinds of weird advanced pitching statistics that weren't totally factored in by the mainstream yet. But now, well, that stuff is about as mainstream as batting average itself at this point. So I guess I'll just have to try to mine for more edges over at Bet Online, whether it is baseball or football, maybe I need to delve into hockey. Maybe that's the secret. But regardless, you got to take advantage of all their offers over at Bet Online, including their 50% welcome bonus on your first deposit when you use the promo code LOCKED ON. Once again, go to their website or mobile device or mobile app today. Sign up, receive your 50% welcome bonus by using the promo code Locked on at Bet Online, where the game starts. One trend I've noticed on game day at Memorial Stadium the past couple seasons that is certainly not unique to Missouri whatsoever. This is an overall trend, and that is the phasing out of marching band music during the games. Now, of course, you've still got the pregame performances, you got the halftime performances. 
the occasional playing of the fight song after a touchdown, that kind of thing. But, you know, it just seems like nowadays it's mostly just, hey, we're, we're going with the the NBA style DJ experience instead of actually just, you know, going with the classic ambiance of a marching band. And to me, that that's very much a part of the college football experience. And, you know, I understand there's also a generational thing here. Probably I'm probably caught right in the middle of these two generations fighting, to be honest. So allow me in that case to offer a bit of a compromise, because one thing I've noticed is sometimes it's not necessarily the beat that the older generation is objective is objecting to. It's the somewhat objectionable words that the older generation objects to when it comes to hip hop music in particular, for instance. Well, again, allow me to compromise. And I thought of this because, you know, I was just messing around with my soundboard the other day. And so I was playing just some instrumental music in my headphones no big deal. The reason why not important, but I was listening to, there's this rap song called plug walk. Okay. If you, if you're unfamiliar with that song, not important, but the point was there was a comment, just the instrumental for this song, a comment on YouTube. The absolute first comment was a moment of silence for all the great beats ruined by words. So again, If the young people even think this on occasion, well, maybe I'm not so old and kooky after all. So my compromise is play some hip hop music, but just play the instrumentals. I think you'll find if you just play the instrumentals, even the older generation that doesn't like hip hop, I think you'll find them suddenly nodding along to it. I think it's the lyrics where you start to lose them a little bit because unlike the younger generation, here's a difference. The older you get, the more you actually start to listen to the lyrics and meaning of words and all this kind of stuff. So again, a little bit of Missouri compromise for you here today. And and by the way, just one more random thought before we get out of here. Why is it that it seems like the COVID-19 pandemic killed basketball coaches wearing suits? What does that have to do with the pandemic? I have absolutely no idea, but I can't help but notice that Everybody in college basketball and NBA basketball now has gone from wearing sort of your full Armani, you know, thousand dollar suits or whatever to now we're all wearing, we've all gone full Bob Huggins and we're just wearing a a pullover windbreaker essentially. I don't know. Do we like that? Do we want them to go back to the suits? I don't really care. I just find it funny that for whatever reason, COVID is the reason that we did it. I found that some of the stuff that's changed in COVID, it's not necessarily because of safety. We're just using COVID as an excuse to not do things we didn't really want to do that much anyway, like buy and dress in suits for every game. So with that thought, you know what? We got to get out of here and hopefully we'll have a decent basketball game to talk to post Missouri, Kansas. You never know. But regardless, I'm the guy you got to get to for all your Missouri, Kansas post game analysis whether good or bad. So check me out right here on Locked on Mizzou, free on all platforms, and of course on YouTube as well. And of course, check out Locked on Bets. If you want to have an edge on all your gambling, you got to check out your boy Q and Lee Sterling. Of course, they are free and available on all platforms as well. So thanks for listening. I'm John Miller, and this has been Locked on Mizzou.